The internet brings comic fans around the world into one comic community. We support the just pay and recognition of these comic creators, comic fam. Because comics are for everyone. It's 10 p.m. Eastern, live from the United States to Australia. This is the Not Near Mint Show. Welcome to Not Near Mint, everybody. It is the 141st episode. It's the first day, or yes, the first day of May. You might have noticed we were not live this past Wednesday. Well, there were some reasons for that. The biggest reason is because I destroyed a $2,000 computer and lost my damn mind. So because of that, we wanted to make sure that we didn't skimp out and didn't short end our guest because our guest is a very important one. Not only is she putting out a Kickstarter that is 75% of the way funded, but she's also a comic book fan and has been reading Saga. And we were talking to her just before broadcast. Why don't we bring her in? Her name is, and we're going to introduce her with special guest, Lori Calcaterra. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, Rob. Thanks for having me on. And you got the name right. Congratulations. <laughs> I, I swear to God, 98% of the time, I butcher names. I don't know. <laughs> no, you did great. You did awesome. So kudos. Gold star for the day. Gold star. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so how have you been? First, let me apologize, uh, first of all. For, for having to, to bump you back to Sunday night, but at least you're here now. You're a comic fan. You have a new book coming out. Yeah. And how, well, first, before we get into the book, you're reading Saga. So of course being, I am. being the fact that you're reading Saga, tell the audience how you feel about it without spoiling the midway point that was that hiatus that we had to wait for three years. Oh my God. We were wondering if it was ever going to come back. I was like, ah, oh, please, you know, and then when it finally came back, it was amazing. And I won't talk about that issue. Go read it. Um, it's the same saga. It's still all up in your face. Um, you get all the goods. <laughs> oh man. It's, it's, uh, it's explicit, but what else do you expect? It's Saga. Um, if you haven't read Saga, it's like Romeo and Juliet in space with um, weird looking aliens and um, bounty hunters, um, aliens that have TVs for heads. Uh, I mean, there's just really amazing characters. They go all out. It's the horns versus the wings. And then, of course, the main character, um, should I say? I mean, it's kind of from the beginning. Yeah, I mean, we kind of know that something happens to one of the characters, and then there's a big time jump, and now we're rejoining the rest of the story. Yeah. Hazel, who I named my dog after, is now a little oh. bit older, and now we're starting to see how life moves on with a character that's no longer with us, and honest to God, the story has not skipped a beat. It is still no. perfection. And there's portions where I'm crying during this. Like when you wound up having in the very last issue, uh, one character remarking about losing a spouse and originally they think that they're talking about themselves. No, they're talking about themselves, uh, this new drug smuggler. And it's like, well, I thought of being about uh, with somebody else, but that just makes me feel even more alone. Yeah. And then you see the response, so do I. I'm like, oh my God, this is writing just for me. Oh. It's, it's, it just hits you. You know what I mean? It's so well written and like, or, or so, I'm so invested in the characters at this point, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, read Saga. Read Saga. Absolutely. <laughs> so saga. Uh, you have a new comic that just came out that's coming out very shortly. Yeah. Uh, why don't you tell the, the ladies and gentlemen that are watching and Endies also, what is Path of the Pale Rat? I should probably have looked at this before I put that on the screen <laughs> because I'm <laughs> So what is Path of the Pale Rider about? Okay, so the title itself, Path of the Pale Rider, the Pale Rider is the fourth horseman of the apocalypse, who is death. So if you read some revelations, there's it talks about the fourth horseman riding in on a pale horse, and he who sits upon the horse, his name is death. So in this world, death is missing. Um, not in the, like... Um, 
actual fourth horseman of the apocalypse, but like the death process is broken. So if your body dies, your soul remains inside your body and you get to experience your own decay process. Hooray. So now you can, <laughs> you get forgetful, you can get violent, you can get indifferent. Um, and the death process is broken for not only people, but animals, insects, everything. So now we have a whole gamut of issues going on. We have overpopulation. We have famine because um, I don't know if you know. Uh, I mean, I eat meat, but can we butcher a cow if it's still moving? Ooh. And would the meat still move when you tried to eat it? I, I might have to rethink my 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 diet choices. Yeah. I was right, a vegetarian but, for a while. I can do it again. <laughs> but here's the here's the other problem. So now our pesticides don't work. The insects could be dead, but they're kind of stupid. They only do like a couple things, right? And eating is one of them. So I doubt that insects would stop eating. So they're going to continue eating all of our crops and we can't stop them. So now we have a shortage of fruits and vegetables as well. So it just, we've, I've spent a lot of time world building. Um, I've thought about like what would happen to the undead as their population grew. You know, maybe the living population would be mm, unforgiving. Um, maybe want them to live separate. Maybe we have a couple different groups of people like the, the undead. We have the undead supporters, the sympathizers. And then we have the, un, the people that want the undead to live separate. At what point does the government step in and take away rights? Right? Because, who's in charge. Well, yes, that's true. But if you think about it, in our world, once you die, you can no longer vote. You can't drive a car. You can't use a firearm. You can't own property. All of those things could continue for the undead because they're there. Um, so at what point do you stop owning property? It's kind of like the debt peonage of the early part of the, the 19th or the 20th century in the early 1900s, where it didn't matter as long as you were a rich white person, you were good. If you weren't, you could be placed into debt peonage, which is basically slavery with extra steps. Mm. Interesting. Oh, things they don't teach us in school anymore. Yeah. And that's not, not even scary, right? <laughs> So in my story, we're 10 years into the apocalypse in episode one. We're following Jude St. Clair, who looks like a cowboy. He's in the apocalypse with his horse. Um, and he's looking for something or someone, trying to figure out what broke the death process. So he's asking the question, why do the dead no longer die? Um, and seeing if he can survive long enough to put the world back to the way it was. So we're a little bit of, I know, seriously, do they have to pay rent? How would you like to die on a Sunday and have to go to work on Monday? No, thanks. I don't want to do that, right? Um, I just want to die. I don't want to be sticking around watching my fingertips fall off. Um, yeah, so I forgot. I lost my train of thought. Oh, so it, he's just... <laughs> 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 you know, go off guardrails here. Ah, uh, yeah, I know. It's all, all right. the time. Um, I lost it again. Cowboy dude riding... Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of like it could really be anything. So he's looking for something or someone. He's been writing in a journal. He has uh, all these conspiracy theories. Is he dead too? <laughs> or is, or no, is he no, he's alive? he's living okay. currently. <laughs> currently, I don't want to. I mean, to <laughs> he's trying to put things back to the way they were. I mean, ten years into the apocalypse, most people have moved on right yeah i mean look at us in covid thing. exactly we moved on so something as drastic as the dead not not it's kind of like in infinity war no i was just gonna say like in infinity war they had that five-year jump and now people yeah. have to live with all the the after effects of this so similar if you have an apocalypse where many years pass People are still roaming the earth while they might not yeah. have tangible physical 
form, you would still have to deal with the after effects of this. If they don't have rights and you've now determined this because history has shown us in America that you'll have Supreme Court justices say, you know what, this is pretty wrong and unethical. So we need positive law, which is just a euphemism for saying, well, it might be evil and wrong and scummy and douchey and nasty and awful and horrifying, but as long as you codify it in law, you can say, well, it reads it right here and we're just following the law. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, you really could take any side. You know what I mean? So in, in the story, I, I show people that are kind of like on both sides. I never really say which is the right side. I just kind of like shine a spotlight on the situation. I show how ugly the human race can be. And then people can make up their own damn mind about what's right and, right and wrong in this world. It's a fictional world. You can do whatever, you know. So, um, yeah, Jude, um, <laughs> Jude is a hard time. Um, he's not <laughs> He's not a um, smooth operator. He's not a martial art expert. He's not a super spy. He's not, you know what I mean? He's just some guy in the apocalypse. Um, he does have a few skills, but it's not anything that would really help him in the apocalypse so um he gets to basically um survive by you know luck and by the skin of his teeth and i throw just about everything i can at him so we can see how he reacts to it because that's how we are as writers so, <laughs> let's see what he so does so is the undead so the, uh, is the undead like the the main like quote unquote bad guy or is it just like surviving is like is what is the bad part of the series surviving because you might have undead that are family you know what i mean and they're still your family yeah. um but you have to to me that would just be horrific to watch a family member have to go through that um you know but it's like at what point do they start losing their mind because their brain is decaying yeah. so you know do you keep them with you do you send them away somewhere i don't know um so yeah, in this world, it's like any little decision that you make has dire consequences. Um, and if you look at like on, on the Kickstarter, when we get there, I have an eight page preview, which is a lot, but I wanted people to see how crazy this world is. But I like that. Yeah. You know, I wanted people to see, really see like Jude, I give you this whole section where he goes down this um, cliffside road and like how he makes some stupid decisions. Um, but they ultimately wake up this giant undead bear and now he has to deal with the consequences of that. So, um, that's about two thirds of the way into the comic. So we have, you know, a section before that, and then there's this section and then there's what happens with Jude and Prince and then the undead bear after. So, um, you'll get to see the results. So is this something that you're planning on making uh, an ongoing series or is this just a one shot just so you can feel it out? And then similar to how Philip Miara, who we're going to be having on in the next uh, few weeks, uh, he did Crackle Volume 3 and one of the last stories uh, was called Purple Eyes. And this story was just a, a jumping board for something that would be a future project for his. So is this something uh, similar where if this kind of takes off that you could keep it going? Because this sounds like a very interesting premise. So um, when I wrote this, I wrote it as a screenplay because I'm from production. So it's actually broken up into 13 episodes for the first arc, which are completed. So I, I didn't know what to do with it. We decided to go the comic book route because my husband and I both love comic books. And it was like a no brainer that we would want to see it in the medium that we love. Um, so we found I found Marco DeFillo, who's our illustrator, who does such a good job. Like if you look at his art, it's fabulous. Um, so we're going to start churning out episodes. So I'm still writing. Um, I'm about seven episodes into the second arc. Um, there will definitely be a third arc. Um, I don't know if there will be a fourth. I do have an ending in that's written, but I don't know how many arcs it will take us to get there. So here we are. Well, here we're seeing the, the story of the path of the pale rider is a brand new Western apocalypse comic series created by Laurie Calcaterra. If you like Mad Max, Fallout, or I Am Legend, this is for you. The series follows Jude St. Clair through a crumbling world. He tries to figure out what caused the dead not to die. This is issue number one where it all starts. First, uh, first issue, first episode, 24 pages. And the fact that you put out there uh, eight pages for people to take a look at. 
Now, to correlate, yeah. uh, earlier last week, I believe, Kevin Smith was trying to do an episode, and I do use trying very loosely. The oh. episode <laughs> was supposed to be about Thor, Love and Thunder. Oh, him and the fat man? Yeah. <laughs> I'll watch a little bit of it. <laughs> so what wound up happening, instead of talking about Thor and Love and Thunder, he started talking about this new movie, which I am dying to see. It stars Michelle Yao, uh, <gasps> Everything Everywhere. Everything all all yeah. Yes. I want to see and that too. So for a two and a half hour broadcast, it was about an hour and a half dedicated to everything Thing, everywhere all at once and maybe 10 minutes till uh, Thor and Love and Thunder. The way that he talked about this movie, he spoiled a lot, but at the same time when he was done with it, I wanted to go see that movie more than I would any trailer that yeah. I could ever imagined. So giving the audience eight pages where some people I can understand. You, you put all this time and effort and money and sweat and blood and tears into it and to just give it away, why would you do that? It'll lure people into actually buy the product. Well, I'm not. Uh, I'm giving enough of the story for you to be invested. Invested in Jude. Invested in Prince. And then I leave it on a cliffhanger. So I'm not giving away like what happens before because when you read the before, you'll find out what he's or who or what he's looking for. So you'll find that out. You'll see what kind of where he's headed to, and then this happens, and then of course we're going to resolve what happens with Big James the Bear. So here we have Pages. His name is Big James. Yes, it's hilarious. <laughs> so this this road freaking sucks. I mean, look at it. Ugh. Boulders falling down, smashing in the cliff below. They both look concerned. Just and then, all of course, the, everything he's running into just reminds us of all the obstacles in our lives that we all have to get through. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, and they all come and then, down. <laughs> yep. Yep. And then, and I mean, talk about a big ass warning sign. Look at it. It says, caution, dead bear. I mean, <laughs> hello. <laughs> but they decide they're going to go. You know, this is kind of like um, The Witcher and Roach. You know what I mean? They have that no, kind of relationship. Yeah. 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 And then he finds this glass sticking out of a zombie hand, yanks it out, goes flying in the air, dives to catching to catch it. And good God, why would you do that? That's stupid. You know, look and see what we got here. And it's an actual map. It's a map of Las Vegas. And moreover, it looks like a more modern map. Mm. And the glass doesn't look like a normal kind of glass from the 1800s. Who said we were in the 1800s? Good point. Now I'm starting to get that idea from, uh, oh, who was the director of the guy that did that signs movie, The Village? Oh, M. Night oh. Shyamalan. Yeah, but that's my point is I'm giving context clues that there's, this isn't really the Old West. Because if you look at what Jude's wearing, it's more modern. If you look at some of the technology that he's wearing, it's like, what is that? That looks modern. So here he is, like, there. all these crows are flying around the corner. We got these birds eating something. That was There's the just... best part, honestly. The birds? The birds picking at the body. Yeah. Oof. And now just... thinking of birds picking at bodies, now all I can think of is that last issue of Rain I read when, uh, well, mm -hmm. not to spoil anything, even though I know I spoil everything all the time. Uh, there was a bird that picks an eyeball out of somebody, and now I'm just thinking of that. That's awesome. <laughs> Obviously, we're not going to shy away from gore in this series, so. It's you know, life. I, I mean, people say, you know, violence is unnatural. What is more natural than violence? It happens all the time in the wild. All you the can't time. Shy away how, from it. It's how things eat and survive. Yep, so here they are going over the bear because you can't go around it, and they didn't want to go back. They have this brief moment of, oh, thank God we made it. And then, of course, the road is just so terrible. The poor horse trips and out goes the glass. It shatters and wakes up the bear. Whoa. Yeah, that just the oh, shit look on his face. I love it. <laughs> well, I think things yeah. are going wrong from here. Uh -huh. Zoinks, you know. It's like, oh, that's not good. So, I mean, and like, look on his chest. You say. can see. Yeah, so I just took, you know, a couple excerpts of um, a few different interviews that I had done and just kind of the reactions to the same things that we we're kind of talking about tonight. So if people are interested, there's me. That's a great picture. Thank you. 
Welcome, and based in Detroit. And you yeah. being a comic book collector, I'm going to have to ask this question now. There was an issue of The Punisher that came out with Eminem. You don't happen to have that, do you? No, I don't. It doesn't make me happy, but I want it. Detroit, I, I kind of was fingers crossed. Well, <laughs> no. The only people I've ever known to have a copy of that lived in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Did they specially come out in Detroit or? Specifically, yes. It was only sold. It was Eminem, yeah. Yeah. It was only sold in a certain amount of areas and it was because of that uh, XL magazine, I believe. It was in like downtown Detroit, like um, areas that I I was not in. I I was like 45 minutes to an hour outside of. And there's, of course, Marco. He's awesome. So now this, uh, here, I'm going to stop scare, uh, sharing yeah. the screen just for a moment. But good question now. So how exactly did you get working on this series? Knowing that you're into comics, mm. you, you love movies yeah. and books. How did this idea come together? Is this something that you've been working on your entire life? Or did something just mm. pop in your head and go, it's simple. I know where to go from here. It, it's kind of a weird progression. I started out doing, okay, uh, not, I'll make a long story short. I started doing martial arts in 1997. So I've been doing martial arts. <laughs> I like you. Um, I started doing martial arts at the age of 17. Um, I've been doing it for 25 years. And um, I started choreographing fight scenes for production companies in 2017, 16, 17. So that- Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so then um, I got more involved with the production company. I produced my own short film kind of as a demo video called Catfishing, which you can see on YouTube. It's hilarious. I'm not an actress, mind you, but we have really good fights. Like I do a wall run in a stairwell. We do gun disarms, flexible weapons, knife. We see? have an extended knife fight. Um, my buddy is- Taki, <laughs> I ran him over with a car. No. Like, was- <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's one of my favorite parts. I always laugh at that part. People look at me like I'm insane, but I'm like, it's funny. It's funny. Anyway, so we did that. And then the production, (laughs) he's a good friend of mine. So it's funny. You'll see the parts that like, um, that really stand out. Like when you watch it, you'd be like, that look, that looked like she really kicked him. It's cause I did. Um, yeah, he, there's, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's parts where he punches me. I kick him. I think I spit in his face once. It's all gross. <laughs> there it is. You found they it. They found the link because of course <laughs> they did. Of course. So we're not going to show that on here. No, we no, no. Go, go find ahead. it and watch it. At it's the funny. End of the episode. Yeah. Don't jump to any other YouTube show. Go to that link. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Um, but since we did that, the production company was then like, hey, do you want to produce content? You wrote a short film. Do you want to write a web series for us? And I was like, absolutely. So I wrote this web series called The Agency, which is more along the same lines as catfishing, where there's um, like secret agents and heavy martial arts. And it, it was a ton of fun. Um, we I wrote two seasons of that. We filmed the pilot. And then my family relocated from Michigan to Texas. So it just didn't happen. You know what I mean? Like, it just, we couldn't, it wasn't feasible. Um, Hello, if you're now in Texas, instead of doing things live action, now you're in the supreme area for all people that do voice acting. I'm excited for that. You know why? I got plans. We'll talk about it. Um, I haven't gotten there yet. But yeah, don't spoil it. Um, So (laughs) after writing the agency, I was like, okay, I can do this, right? So then I had the idea, "Hmm, what would happen if nothing died? And then I started building the world of Path of the Pale Rider. I was actually writing under a different name called Dead West, but um, that name is super popular. Like there's like bands with that name. There's other comic books with that name. I was just like, okay, I need to be different. So spent some time, came up with Path of the Pale Rider. Um, It fits because death, it's the apocalypse. Um, There's, it's very Western spaghetti Western feel to it. And there's a there's a Clint Eastwood movie called The Pale Rider. So we're referencing all of these things, you know. Mm. There's multiple meanings to that title. So Did you um, did you grow up watching a lot of westerns? Yeah, Fistful of Dollars, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, mm. lots of Clint Eastwood. Yeah. I still um, think the second movie is the best. Which one? 
the uh, for a few dollars more. That one feels like more. everything that Quentin Tarantino ever wanted to do in a movie, and yes. he's ripping it off ever since. And he's been trying <laughs> exactly. I was going to say, and it shows up in all of his film. You can see the the he uses some of the same camera angles. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. it, um, it he just puts in a lot more blood. <laughs> It's so influential that I try showing it to people that aren't into Westerns because I get how people aren't into Westerns. So you just have to do a little bit more. And it's nuanced. Not everything has to be all those 1950s TV shows that you ever yeah. imagined that was boring, that was on in the 80s every single day after you came home from school. You, We've seen lots of Westerns in modern times where they take these simple elements and add little nuances. And it's a new fold that you've just not seen before. And this is what I like about storytelling. In comics, the great thing about comics, you can basically have a budget of a trillion dollars because it's art. You don't have to worry about yeah. the production crew going, yeah, we're going to need to talk about numbers here. Right. Right. It's like you can put anything you want to into this story as long as your artist can draw it and bring it to life. It's there. So any kind of different technology, any kind of gore, any kind of you know, different race or aliens or under the water technology. It's like if it's in your head and you could put it on paper, the reader can experience it with you. And you're not having to pay like um, a studio for CGI, which is crap. And then everybody loses interest in the story because the CGI is terrible. You know what I mean? Like there's just so many things about production that it's like things can fall apart so easily. Yeah, I mean, just look at Michael Bay after we had oh, Ambulance gosh. came out. And in an interview, he said, yeah, it would have been a lot better if it wasn't for the fact we had such shitty CG. And I'm going, the movie just got released. <laughs> Way to take your own movie, dude. Like, no one's going to see it now. Don't you want people to go see it? Plus, you had people that worked on it. Maybe keep that to yourself. <laughs> Maybe they're not going to work for you no more. Um, no more favors for that man. But, but he's not... Fair. I like money, and even if someone's an asshole, I'll still need money. True, but I mean, I don't know. No favors for that man. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how Path of the Pale Rider came to be. And it, I wrote the script again. I didn't know what to do with it. I sat on it for a year. My husband read it, and he was like, "This is a comic book." And I was like, "You are so right." <laughs> I'm like, I, "Sometimes Perfect. you have to have that person, yeah, like yeah. take you out from yourself, like get you past your own." blinders because i'm from production 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 Respective. production right yeah. and he was like this is a comic book and i was like oh my god what am i doing with my life okay so new <laughs> question because as we've been speaking to people that have written screenplays books novels comic yeah. books uh being from production and knowing what screenplays look like have you found it a bit more challenging to write for the page knowing that uh, beat per beat that once you turn that page, you don't want to have something spoiled on the very next page as you have it open. Uh, did you find any difficulty in that? And was it easier or how did you find it working with an artist in all this? Um, well, I'm actually still writing in screenplay format. Um, and when I do that with like the first thing that Marco and I do is we will read the episode together. And he and I will talk about like, okay, this makes sense to have a page turn here. You know what I mean? So we're cognizant of that, but I'm not, I'm just creating when I'm writing. And then when him and I sit down together, that's when we kind of like fit it into, okay, this is this page. This is this panel. This is how the flow is going to work. You know, how many pages should we allot for the bear chase? Stuff like that. So um, I really rely on him being the expert because I don't, you know, it's like I, I read comics, but I don't think about like when I'm writing how it goes on the page. I'm just seeing it in my head. So that kind of comes after the fact, after the after the writing. So well, is it almost that you kind of like how you'd have people that were writers back in the 1940s, 50s, where just write out as much as you can. And then uh, you'd have to butcher your baby. You have to take it and cut it in half or cut it into a mm. third. Uh, was it just a lot of rearranging or did, did it evolve over time? And now do you just feel that you can do the beats as needed? Yeah, that's exactly it. So when I first wrote it and it was one big thing, I was like, oh God, I got to break this up into episodes. <laughs> like, you know, and you want them to be roughly the same amount of pages. You don't want one that's seven pages and one that's 35 pages. So obviously we want it to be consistent. So mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time 
figuring out where the episodes start and begin. And of course, coming from production, I wanted to end on, oh God, I need to know what's next. You know, you want the reader to, to, <laughs> to need more, um, either on a cliffhanger or on a twist yeah, or twist, in a situation. There, those are definitely, it says a reader that tells her like a single to me. Right. It's, it's the reason why I read a lot of like good indies because like, there's a fucking twist at the end. <laughs> I need right. it. I need to know what happens yeah. next. Lori, give me episode two or right now. Or make some predictions. Like, that's what mm -hmm. you want your readers to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when it comes to writing long form kind of comics, you'll have people that can do the the easy, I can't say easy, but uh, for, for the sake of my argument here, the easy way of doing like a five issue one and done. But when you come to these series like Walking Dead, Invincible, yeah. uh, Saga, where it's the long form storytelling, where you know it's going to be yes. about five, six, ten years, whatever it might be. Or even Tom King that gets it truncated from his Batman series. That <laughs> might have a, a Bible of sorts where you know from point A all the way to point Z, but some of the points in between you can kind of fill in here and there. But as time progresses, I don't think for a second there is a single writer, not not Alan Moore, not Warren Ellis, not Garth Ennis, not any of the writers from Britain even, uh, that have figured out every single beat from point A to point Z. Because once you get to about maybe five issues, 10 issues, 15 issues, things start changing, especially if you, mm -hmm. especially if you have a large cast of characters that have to interact with one another. Mm -hmm. You build your own roadblocks. You back yourself into your own corners and yeah. knowing that now after we've read many long stories uh have you used all of these techniques or have you used any of these techniques that you've seen from other writers and what have you learned from from this process okay so when i write my process is i use a lot of three by five cards which is crazy hello um, so what I do is I write down ideas on three by five cards and I kind of outline my story and I usually, you know, you write the beginning, you write the end, and then you got to figure out how to get through the middle. Um, but I use the three by five cards because I'm like, okay, I'm stuck here. And then I have an idea of how the character gets through it. So I can rearrange things, add, take stuff out, you know what I mean? As it goes. Um, and that's, you know, I like to finish the whole arc before my illustrator starts picking up issues you know what i mean because when i started writing up arc number two i was like oh my god i need to put something into arc one so i had to go back and i had to rewrite an episode change an episode you know to add breadcrumbs of what's going to happen starting in arc two so it's like i need to i need to have that i, I it's like i needed to have that two years of writing under my belt before i could even approach um an illustrator and that that's kind of what i've learned and um you know and to be in order to have like the good payoff and like all the references and the characters set up so that way they're not pulling stuff out of your your butt at the finale like all of a sudden jude can speak french like no he can't he's never he's never spoken french in the last 12 episodes it's like he doesn't speak french in episode 13. so it's like you have to have that foresight you know the thought that the you know the time into the story um if, if you don't have something of a bible written down and i don't mean that as the religious bible right something written down so Your that world. way to correlate this best to let's just use i don't know x23 wolverine as an example yes. when she was first created she only had bones for for regular bones she didn't have an adamantium skeleton and then somewhere along the line they decide to go yeah by the way she has an adamantium skeleton now wait what? but she didn't have one when did with. that happen yeah that like, happened like, right when she died when she had to go into this one world in the i think it was the dugan x-men part uh the, the more recent x-men uh relaunch like volume 10 or 20 i don't know but it was during that run that she sent over she dies and then the five have to bring her back to life and then they go oops we kind of brought her back with an adamantium skeleton so it shows that they can totally change people's dna even though she didn't have it to begin with they had to kind of explain things away because people didn't pay attention to each other's writing and then they had to kind of make it make yeah. sense yeah but that's what happens when you have too many people you know what i mean too many cooks spoil the soup it's like it happens a lot with 
I'm not going to name names, bigger, bigger comic producers. <laughs> I've, I've had some insight in some of the behind the scenes from maybe like the 90s era of comics. And it was just like, oh, my God, how did you guys put up with that? But we needed money to eat. I know <laughs> that's <laughs> it. That's it. But it's just like, that's how you got these crazy. Like ass comics. Yeah, that's true. I mean, when it came to comics way back in the 90s, it's so sad to actually say this. But I remember trying to break into comics myself back in the late 90s, early 2000s. And back then, uh, page rates were about maybe $75 to about maybe $150 if you were the lower kind of tier. Fast forward to today, and you're lucky if you might even be able to get that $100 for a page. The yeah. prices have not gone up for pay for artists. Uh, letters are still very disrespected. Colorists, I mean, you have Justin Ponser that wound up getting cancer and died, and very little was ever done to try and help him in his situation. And the guy basically colored everything that we read in Marvel Comics throughout most of the early 2000s and 2010s. So I guess this now begs a new question. Do you have a pitch ready for Marvel or DC? And if so, nope. nope. <laughs> <Good answer. laughs> I have a pitch ready for Image. I have a pitch ready for oh, nice. um, other yeah. indie. I'm looking at some other ones. I have maybe Happy Tank, uh, Scout. Um, oh, I I, there's, Scout. A, there's a few other that are on my list. But I do have a pitch ready, but I'm waiting until we get 100% funded. We definitely have all the material. I have my one-page synopsis with all the spoilers. Um, you know, it's like I have my cover page, we have enough pages and, and a color cover. Um, Marco's on board to do as many episodes as he can. So there's, there's no reason not to start pitching as soon as we get funded, you know, because at that point, it's for sure that we're going to have an episode. So this could be like one of those situations that uh, we've been seeing happen a lot lately in Image Comics, where an issue gets released maybe two years ago, five years, oh, there's even one that was about 30 years ago that they're re-releasing now because they have some of the original artists and cool. holy crap it's like this thing was created long ago and now we're bringing it back as an encore and it's going to go ongoing mm -hmm. so we're seeing that happening a bit more and more with some of these uh these indie projects where image needs to to put content out there like anybody else but at least the one good thing i can say about image and idw vault especially vault they have such great page quality is that these indie companies when they put a book out they put a lot more care and attention and detail into the yes. presentation of it uh i don't know if i have it here with me but there's <laughs> you know, it's right here uh any of these books coming out from marvel today like especially the second prints of these things the paper quality, I swear to God, toilet paper would be better than what we're picking up. What are they using? Paper. What are they using? Like 45 weight or something? I think it's weight? less than that even because the second- 35 I, weight? I think it's less. I, I don't know. Oh my know. God. It's so flimsy that all the spines from the second you take it out of the box from Diamond or Lunar or wherever it be uh, are just dinged all along the, 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 the spine. And then you go oh. to turn the page and they wrinkle automatically. It's just terrible. I oh cannot God. say that about Waltz books. I can't say that about Behemoth. I mean, hell, take a look at this. Yeah. This came out this past week. Uh, and I know this might be a little bit, ooh, to some people. But Vermilion, it's, it's an adult yeah. story. But when you open this book up, which I can't because we'll get yanked off the internet. Ooh, uh, it's that kind of a book. But the page quality, the, the cover is very hard. There, there's no way that you're going to be bending this unless you intend to damage the book. Hey, whack. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And that's what I'd prefer to get in a comic book. And this is why, I have, honest to God, I have not read a comic book up until this past weekend since January because my mom passed away and I just didn't want to read. I, it just kept growing and growing and growing as the stack. And then when I finally went to go dig into my stack this past weekend, what were the books I was reading? All Independence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. That's yep. usually what I tend to go to first. It's like the yeah. Independence. Oh, do you have your kitty there with you, Kirk? We, uh, we need she, a cameo appearance. She's sleeping on the bed. I, she, I was Aww. petting her earlier. Hold on. And good point, Rose. There does need to be a good replacement for Deadly Class. That just is is wrapping up, or I think it might have just wrapped up. But holy oh, crap. I could start reading this one. <laughs> I could start reading this one. Because we have lots of death, dying, destruction. We kill people a million different ways. 
Um, it's gross. It's exciting. We have twists. There's undead bears. Oh my god, that is a kitty. Oh! Oh my goodness. That is such a cute kitty. What's the kitty's name? Uh, Bass. Bass? Yeah. I, I half thought for a second that you were going to pull a line right out of Clerks. Annoying customer. <laughs> <laughs> she's cute. I love her gray ears. Aww. Yeah, she, she's, she's a feisty one. Earlier, she was she was biting my feet. I think she fell asleep. <laughs> But y'all made me wake her up. It wasn't me. Sorry. I didn't do it. Hey, actually, it's Rose that's waking the cat up right now because they just screamed. No, I'm not going to do it. Well, no, Rose wanted to see the art. Oh, <laughs> yeah, let's see that art. Holy crap! That is Alec Tross, right? Yep. I, uh, I I've been I've been late, too lazy to hang it up, so I just left it on my desk. Nice. Looks good right there. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, it does. It looks great right there, right behind you. It's perfect. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. uh, since we, we just got to talking about the book, and there is one other thing that I just wanted to mention. For those of you out there that are watching the show right now, I know this isn't our typical Wednesday broadcast, but generally yeah. speaking, whenever we do one of these shows, if somebody winds up donating or buying the Kickstarter, Ace, who is on the broadcast, does a little something special. We are now oh. at... 3874 out of a goal of 4550. There are 13 days to go, so there's almost two weeks, but don't let that two weeks be a stopping point. Uh, sooner is better than later. And especially in this episode, if you wind up buying it within the next few minutes, we're going to have something special for you. But otherwise, uh, cool. we do have kind of, kind of. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, people don't know about the other stuff with the Kickstarter. Ooh, let's tell them. Okay, so every time I'm releasing an uh, episode, there's two other things that come out with it every time. And these are not stretch goals that come with the, the comic. So every time we release a comic, there will be a short film. Hence, I come from production. So, I mean, like, the, the world is so big. I, I made all these crazy things. Um, and, of course, Jude makes his way through the apocalypse. He doesn't get to see all of these things, or we don't get to show it in the comic. So I figured we could explore some of those additional things with more content. So the short films, um, like if you keep scrolling down toward the bottom where it has the big picture, it'll have, we have a short film. It's a, it's a commercial for the undead retirement community. Um, and then in the middle of it, it kind of, I don't know, it like fritzes out and it, it, it static. And then you see like riots and you see violence and shooting and things are on fire. Um, are you trying to find it, Rob? I'm looking. I'm just showing oh, all you're... the people here all the different uh, all the different pledges they can do at this. Oh, okay, time. I was gonna say I was like, oh, your rewards. But the the short films are gonna be interactive. So starting with episode two, I'm gonna open up submissions for the readers to send me 30 second clips. I can edit everything together. And then we're going to have one cohesive short film on a topic. So next, next episode topic is conspiracy theories. So we're going to experience, you know, what do people think about what caused the death process to break? Is it chemical? Is it a virus? Is it aliens? Is it the rapture? Is it sentient yogurt? And nobody knows, you know, <laughs> anything. Um, so I want to see what people are thinking. I want to see, I want to hear what people say about it and act it out. You know, you can be that crazy person on the news, like, hey, oh, I saw those aliens. They picked up my Mima in her nightgown and the her end is near. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> missing a couple teeth, right? I mean, that's what I'm looking for. I want those crazy <laughs> interviews to come on and just to, to we can have a good time and laugh about it. But it's like <laughs> you could be a part of the world. And everybody can see the short film when the episode two comes out. So there's that. And then, and then, every episode has a riddle. So we have Easter eggs. We're going to have scavenger hunts. There's going to be a riddle. So the back cover of episode one is actually on the Kickstarter. I've had three people solve the riddle already. Same. It's really cool. Um, that was fast. So it, it, I know, but they're all super smart. Like, I couldn't believe it. Um, I was like, yeah, gold star for the day. Um, <laughs> so the riddles, 
there's going to be, I don't know, Morse code, ciphers, invisible ink, um, QR code. Um, it's all different ways to solve riddles, right? And it'll send you to some place in the real world. So this one, when you solve it, it takes you to a place. That's how you know you've solved it. <laughs> and then in the future, it might send you to a YouTube channel, a podcast, a phone number that you have to call. Maybe it'll ask for an address and you get something in the mail from us. I mean, it's, there's just no end to the things that we can do. Um, it's kind of like this big rabbit hole that you can fall into and just experience more, participate more mm. with the path of the Pale Rider. So it's just something fun. I, I, this is the kind of stuff that I eat up. I would love to do this. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm making for my readers. I'm making that world for you. Especially seeing that you have a lot of people that put out the merch kind of stuff and bookmarks are cool. Tokens are cool. I like being able to watch stuff. I like physical stuff that I can read. I like bonus content of like an extra yes. page or something or a poster. You've even had people that even put out a freaking video game that they made from scratch. That was our last people that were on last week. And uh, the people that put these things together put so much time, so much effort. These are labors yeah. of love. Yeah. This isn't just the next issue of Wolverine or the next issue of the 28th Batman comic to come out in the span of a month. There's a lot of Batman. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how about try something? original out there folks this is it path of the pale rider you can find it on kickstarter we have the links in the chat the link will also be inside the description that you can wind up seeing tonight or as your leisure because this this is going to be live and on the internet forever the the link is right there the kickstarter as well as the path of the pale rider wordpress.com so you can check out Lori's page there now here's a good question now that we're getting back to some comics because we'll finish out that we're yeah. just talking about what we like to read and what makes us kind of tick in this so you're a current comic book reader we fleshed yeah. that out from the beginning what are you reading right now what are you enjoying um, are you a collector I, my husband collects um he has yeah he's been trying to <laughs> he's been working on getting that last um, fables that's like they're not printing anymore so he's been working on trying to get that but I, I honestly have been rereading some of the stuff and then um, I'm of course reading Saga digitally um, did they read they, I was rereading Nailbiter on Image which is so good they need to make a live action of that if I could see anything live action I think that would be awesome but I've been I've been rereading um, East of West I I mean, come on. It's a, it's an apocalypse story. It's the four horsemen of the apocalypse and it's about death. So why would you not, <laughs> you know what I mean? But the way that Hickman writes, it's just, it's so cool. Um, you know, it's like if the apocalypse had happened in the past and the nations were broken up into, um, they have this map. Can I show a map without getting in trouble? I think you're good. Where's the map? We've only gotten yanked off this channel once, and we're not going to be showing any uh, nudie comics anymore. Yeah, no nudie comics. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, we learned. Right. That was that was an interesting day. <laughs> yeah, Boundless. Sorry, I'm sure you produce great comics. I cannot show you any of their covers. Aww. Where the heck is the map? Here it is. All right, so the, the world is broken up into the Union. I'm sorry, not the world, North America. The Union, the Confederacy, Texas has its own <laughs> Republic of the United States. Of course. Texas. I mean, I live in Texas, so I understand that. People here are crazy. Um, the nation, which is the nation of the American, unless it's the um, like uh, Indian nation, like Native Americans. Uh, the kingdom, which is uh, freed slaves. And there, that's like New Orleans. Um, Armistice, which is like there was a um, an asteroid that hit the west. The yeah, it was like Arizona area and left a crater. And there's like this spire there. It's called Armistice. Um, the PRA, which is the People's Republic of America, so it's like China owns um, California, like that area. 
Um, so that's how the country is broken up. So it's like if the apocalypse had happened back then when all those nations were, you know, splitting things up, but now we're in the future of that. So it's really interesting. Um, cause they, all these different, like they all interact. I can't show it. Oh, we can see. Yeah. All these different nations interact. And like what happened is a lot of their leaders in these nations are actually part of this secret cult that support the end of the world and the apocalypse. So, and every so often the four horsemen of the apocalypse are reborn into the world. Look at this. So these three were born together at the same time, but death, they, they actually, um, something happened the last time they were born. I don't want to spoil the story, but death of course was the one that did it. And so the three of them actually took him out. So, yeah. Who is it that I, I just, never read this story? I know. Oh, my gosh. I know. Hickman is great. I love him on uh, when he did X-Men. I loved him when he was on Fantastic yes. Four. But I don't know why I never picked that up. I have every issue of Saga. I, ha I used to have. Not now anymore. Yeah. But I had every issue of Walking Dead, Invincible. How did I not jump on this? Yeah, um, you gotta put it on your list, Rob, because it's, it's been on my list, list definitely. I just oh haven't my had gosh. a chance to read it. I know my list is so giant too. It's like I still yeah. want to read Battle Pug. I haven't picked that up yet. One of my friends recommended it and said it's awesome. I just haven't done mm -hmm. it yet. Mm -hmm. My big three um, for for the independence that I still need to get just a single issue, let alone the entire run, Wicked and the Divine, because of Ace. Uh, I still need to read all of uh, East West and Sex Criminals by Chip Zdarsky, who is now my current favorite comic book writer uh, when it comes to Marvel Comics. But then again, David Pepos just started uh, writing for Savage Avengers that will be coming out cool. this Wednesday. Oh, that's awesome. I can't believe he's finally writing for Marvel. He was talking about it for a while. He's doing it. I don't know. I don't know what the... I don't know. I'm not big enough yet. You know what I mean? Um, I don't have enough clout. I feel like if I were to go to Marvel or DC with Path of the Pale Rider, they would um, take over. You know what I mean? They would have another writer involved. They would bring in their own artist. And then it would become less and less of the story that I created. My characters would be different um, than what I intended. So I'm not I'm not ready to let go of um, creative control yet. Yeah. I, you know, I'm very attached no, to my characters. Sense, um, yeah, I have a, a strong female character who's a fighter and she's amazing and I don't want her to get changed in any way, shape or form. I want you guys to be able to experience her. Um, for who she is. Uh, yeah. yeah. Before, before Hollywood or media get to her. What? How about this? So what? you know who Robert Kirkman is. I'm pretty sure at this point, everybody in the world that watches or has a TV knows who he is. Yeah. Right at the height of his popularity doing uh, Invincible, which people had no idea what that was at the time, but everyone knew what Walking Dead was. He started writing for Marvel. He was given yeah. Yeah, he, was. he was given, well, you can try out doing this Marvel zombie thing, but ultimately his his tenure working for Marvel was not very long because we found out that it didn't matter if everyone knew who he was. When he was working for Marvel, he was just the next Another number of the yeah. team. Yep. And, and we're also scary. seeing what's happening now with uh, Russell Dodderman, uh, that was with the artist on Thor for, I guess now it's going to be coming out very shortly, the uh, Thor God and Thunder. There was a panel that was exact from that issue. I think it was from the third issue. And it yeah. showed this giant dragon, this giant ice dragon dead. And it was the exact panel. I'm sure he got paid nothing for that. So Probably whatever not. you create for them, great that you created it. You're not gonna see it. No, Marvel owns it. I think it's mm -hmm. like with Disney where it's like it, anything that you create while you're employed with Disney belongs to Disney, no matter if it's a personal project or not. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if Marvel and DC are that way, but it's like if you're working for them and you're working on a story, it's their story. You're just attached. I've, to heard, I've definitely heard that with Disney for sure. But I'm yeah, not sure... That's... If it's, yeah, that's, that's I mean, a sticky situation for sure. 
So yeah. also earlier last week, uh, we lost a, a great, great no. hero in the community. Uh, okay. Whatever you might have thought of his politics, whether left wing, re- left wing or right wing, it matters not. This is a guy that fought tooth and nail for, for creators' rights, for making sure that you got paid for things that were done long, long ago. If it wasn't for him, uh, the the art of collecting comic book pages would not even be a thing. He got people like Jack Kirby. He got the yeah. artwork back for them. So we lost a person this past week that was a, a tooth and nail fighter for, for the rights of creators. And we're going to need more of those people because I'm not seeing them anymore. They're, they're slowly going away. And the sad thing yeah. is when People are new creators, uh, new in any kind of field. Uh, They don't feel as though that they step up to ask for things that they feel is actually deserved because they just want the job. They want to hold on to that job, just like Bill Finger did when he was working underneath Bob Kane, basically created the Batman and then said, yeah, no, I'm the creator of Batman. You're just hired help. (laughs) I like the paycheck, so okay. Well, that's slowly going away. But we're going to need more pushback. And if we don't get that pushback, Marvel's just going to be able to railroad creators from here on out until, you know, the films kind of go the way of the dodo and people stop watching them and go, hey, let's go back to Westerns. <laughs> <laughs> and they're making a comeback. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, I went and backed a couple other Western horror and Western like um, indie comics on Kickstarter that are live right now. I was like, ooh, my family. Like, you're my tribe. I see you. (laughs) I was like, come back, me too. (laughs) So good times. Uh, We're coming up on the hour now, so I want to make sure that people know where to reach you, where to find you, and if you might have any upcoming appearances on other YouTube shows, Twitch, or what have you, just so people know where they can go find you next. You get the Um, uh, hello, everybody. Um, I have a Facebook group that's actually where a majority of the people are. So the Facebook group is called Path of the Pale Rider. There's my Instagram. Um, there's my personal one, Lori Calcaterra, also Path of the Pale Rider. Um, that same handle, at Path of the Pale Rider with all the underscores, that's our um, TikTok handle. So I'll put up pages, I'll put up updates, and I have another, like, a few corny. I'll do, I do extra content on there, but it's usually small stuff. Um, Twitter, we're at Path Pale Writer, and of course the website, um, it's just pathofthepalewriter.com. I own the domain, so you don't have to put in all the WordPress nonsense because it's so freaking long. Um, let's see, do, 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 do. I have a, ne- my next interview was on Wednesday, May the 4th, be with you, I mean May the 4th, um, with Spoiler Country, um, and then on the 7th, I'm doing a giant podcast with bring the popcorn and there's going to be like a bunch of comic book nerd podcasters and like myself, a creator on there. Oh, wow. We're going to be doing like Marvel trivia and um, we're going to do um, Jason Craig is actually going to do cash prizes. I'm going to be giving away some art, some original art from path of the pale writer. Um, we're going to talk about Dr. Strange. Cause of course it will be out. Um, and then I think oh, we're going to do, a watch a watch party but it's like you have to watch it on your own we're all just going to watch at the same time and comment um we're going to watch the first doctor strange together so but it'll be lots of fun i mean it's great when you get a bunch of nerds together and we're like-minded and we want to talk about like comics and cool things it's, it's fun we get to nerd out and be ourselves and who cares right that's Live the entire life. reason why we have this show because <laughs> most of us we don't Pretty have much. in our regular life that we can talk to about this stuff. Yeah. Earlier tonight, uh, well, just as we got this comment just dropped here a moment ago, is there going to be a Lady F and Rob night? Yeah, probably going to be having that back again this Wednesday, where the whole cast will be here, and on either Friday or Saturday night we're going to be doing that. But Lady F is taking a break tonight. Uh, she'll be back on Wednesday, we hope, and otherwise. Uh, well, the, we were supposed to have on the, the owner of Black Cape Comics, but they will be rescheduling for another time. But do check out their website. They have a lot of great stuff. And uh, otherwise, uh, we thank you so much, Lori, for coming on to this show. 
And one yeah. thing I just wanted to make a remark on, anybody that wants to go see Doctor Strange and is trying to bet on comic books uh, from news that we just saw drop tonight, there are some additions and then there's some subtractions. Uh, so things that you should be looking for, that first appearance of Peggy Carter, the first appearance of Sharon Carter, yeah, we're going to be having uh, Tom Cruise, but he'll only be in it for eh, that movie. So don't invest too highly in that superior Iron Man I think they're just going to kill everybody off. That's my theory. <laughs> I haven't seen anything. I'm just guessing people. I don't, this is not a spoiler. This is a theory. I have a theory that everybody in that room is going to get fried. So <laughs> my biggest theory is, is that we're just waiting for secret wars so that they can have everybody at this point already introduced all the famous people where their paychecks are way too expensive. Yeah. And then they'll just say, we thank you for all these projects. Now we can hire nobodies and start the process all over again. We're calling yeah. it the soft reboot of the universe. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. They're, I mean, like, I like what they're doing with Moon Knight. They're bringing in characters that haven't gotten a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. Um, Mother's Day. I would do that. That's cool. Oh, because I'm, of I'm Wanda and the two kids. That's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. wah, wah. <laughs> I don't think we'll be too happy. Mm -hmm. feels in the same. Yeah. And all the what ifs that we wound up watching, yeah. whether people liked it or not, it all matters. But as yes. you said, if they wound up killing everybody during the course of it, uh, maybe it does or doesn't. Doesn't matter. We're all excited. We can't wait to see it. Again, Lori, thank you so much for coming on to the broadcast. <laughs> You're Everyone, yeah, we appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, I want to come back so we can talk more nerd stuff. Anytime. We love having <laughs> people on that love the same stuff we do, which is comics in general. <laughs> I know you got a, a library behind you. That's awesome. Yeah, it's something that I've been putting together for uh, one year. Justice. Two years or like my okay. entire damn life. <laughs> <laughs> Seems about that's accurate. Yeah, I can say. <laughs> so again, thank you everybody for coming to the show. Uh, Comics on the Mind, do you have anything coming up on your broadcast soon? Or uh, not, 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 not really. No new shows coming up. Uh, yeah, not, not this Monday, but next Monday. All right. Yeah. Otherwise, my only appearance was on Mr. Comics 89, where I won a debate because, hey, it was, that was great. That was I was great. I was Zatanna going up against Ghost Rider, and everyone was telling me, Ghost Rider's going to kill you. I don't know how you're going to debate that. Well, uh, you ever heard of uh, Lao Tzu that know yourself? Oh, wait, no, it's Sun Tzu, the other one. Uh, know yourself and know your enemy, and you'll win every time. If you know yourself and you don't know your enemy, you'll win some and you'll lose some. If you don't know yourself or your enemy, you lose every time. So I just did a lot of research, wrote it down, and looked at notes. That's the only way I did it. It's not like I, I, I have a superpower. I just know how to make notes. But that was it. Otherwise, thank you all for joining, and we will be back Wednesday night at our usual time. This is just a special uh, one-off edition. We're not going back to our two nights a week anymore because oh, no. a lot of time yeah. and effort, and we have actual jobs. Until we can do this 24-7 for you all, we will be back to our regular time, 10 p.m. Eastern. Thank you all for joining us. We love you. Good night. Bye, everybody. Back, back to the Pale Rider.